And what we've got here is this brass ring, which was designed to fit on to here. And it was supposed to be a press fit, but it's pretty sloppy, as you can see. So what we need to do is make this hole smaller. And in order to do that, I'd like to build myself an inside diameter knurler. And in order to produce that, I'm going to use one knurling wheel and a piece of 5 8 water hardening drill rod because it's going to need to be fairly rigid in order to withstand the pressure that we're going to put onto it. So I'm cutting off about 4 inches of my 5 8 drill rod. I'm going to borrow one of these knurling wheels from this old knurling tool by just knocking out the pin. Now the inside diameter of the knurling wheel is 265 thousandths. So that would be the size that we're going to have to turn down a, a post on the end of here that will fit that knurling wheel. We got it pretty close uh, to the size we need it now. And it goes on and it's not super loose. It's uh, actually maybe a little tight, but it'll wear right in. That's looking pretty good. And the knurl is a larger diameter than the post, which is good. Now what we're going to do here is put a little groove in here so we can put an E-clip on and that'll hold the knurling wheel on there. Our E-clip measures 38 and a half thousandths, almost 39 thousandths of an inch. So we're going to need to make a groove that's just a tiny bit larger than that. Okay, I've got a hacksaw blade set up here in the tool holder. And I've lowered the, the tool holder down so the hacksaw blade is just a few thousandths below where I first touched on the top of the post. got a groove in there. Now we'll find out how that uh, E-clip is going to fit on there. Okay, that tapped on pretty nice and not much slop. Looks like it's going to hold there. All I've done is taken the piece, turned it around and put the other end in. The, the knurling wheel is still on the other end. We've clamped it up here this is 5 eighths. I have a half inch chuck, so I'm going to have to take this down to something around a half an inch in order to put it into the chuck. All right, we've got our half inch chuck set up attached to our tool post so that we can move it in and out however we need to. And we can wind it right inside here. And the more pressure we put on, the better knurl we should get. So I'm uh, going to attach the camera uh, and we'll see uh, how much vibration we get, but uh, let's see how it works.
had uh, hoped for a little better result than this. See if we can get you in close here, you can see what's going on. Maybe if I turn the light out, we'll get a better result. So there is somewhat of a small knurl in there. And in this case, I think it just might do the job. It might do what I'm looking for. We're going to take the ring off there and try it on that uh, mill wheel and see if we get a better press fit than we had before. Well, I'm a little disappointed in how well this worked. It, it didn't give me a, as deep a knurl as what I thought I could get on the brass. I guess the brass is pretty hard, but uh, I don't know why putting more pressure on didn't give me a better result. However, what I did get seems to have made this quite a bit tighter than what it was. So it worked on this. I think if this were aluminum, you would have a rather impressive knurl on here from doing it this way. But uh, I got the job done. I am going to heat treat this post because uh, those uh, knurling wheels are pretty hard and after numerous uses I think this would wear right down in a hurry. So I will heat treat this and hang on to it. It may be of use in the future, especially on an aluminum part.